Who would you like to see a back with another computer video? Now this one here might not be worth a whole lot to you guys, but hey, I built something else and this machine is a little bit interesting uh, considering what it is. And hey, I, I have to also, I, I can't really lie here. I've not exactly had anything planned for this video. Actually, then it like this video for this week um, or this side of this week, you know what I mean? Uh, but I, I meant to have this video out yesterday. Um, but a long story short is I did record this video and it was all ready to go. Uh, but the phone here, which hey, this is this is also an excuse for me to try out my new phone's camera. Um, it was, yeah, basically the phone recorded it in portrait and it was just unusable in that regard. So anyhow, this here is basically the result of a bunch of the old hardware that I had kicking around uh, after I built not only the uh, the server there that's just underneath the network switch and the firewall and all that and the uh, the backup machine up there. So pretty much. This is now my third server, and no, I don't really need a third server, but um, I had a lot of hardware lying around, not only just a ton of hard drives, because I actually nearly filled up this entire 4U uh, 14 drive case with spare hard drives that really wouldn't have had any kind of life outside of perhaps a spare parts or scrap server like this one. Um, and also, like same with the CPU and all that, but I'll get on to that. So, as I just basically said, oh, if I just sit down here, and yes, this will, this server will ultimately go on the uh, uh, the shelf of doom somewhere if I just remove that empty case. Um, but like I said, this is just a reused uh, sort of old uh, hardware collection thing server. As I am a big believer of uh, trying to reuse old hardware rather than uh, throwing it out, because n none of the hardware in here is really got anything wrong with it outside of a lot of bad sectors on some of the hard drives, and the uh, the far sort of um, six on the left there, uh, those drives were actually the ones that came out, the uh, the old sort of quote working server or the smaller server I had for parent stuff, so there's the six 500 gigs in there, um, and you know I will probably use this server and use the hard drives within this server until they basically give up and die, and if you're wondering well if you are literally going to use a hard drive till it's about to die, what like, what sort of data are you going to put on it, eh? Like, because it obviously can't be anything that valuable. Technically, yes and no. I'm just going to end up copying what's on that top machine up there and have a backup of a backup, because that machine is actually acting as a backup to um, to that machine there, and then uh, the machine up there will, ba uh, will be backed up to this machine, or at least as much as I can. This machine actually does have quite a bit of storage on it, uh, relatively speaking. It, there is a lot of single drives. I have not, like, done any kind of spanned volume or um, like a JBOD even though that would make a lot of sense because the drives if we uh, well there's also the uh, the IDE drives there but the um, the two drives that are in the middle there with that space in between them um, they're actually just a couple of SATA drives as well but all of these drive all of the drives from the two over there to these um, few here they are random sizes and you know not really suitable for a raid and well not to mention like I said if um or actually, I hadn't said yet, but all right, whatever. Um, with a JBOD, though, you know, or a spanned array, you know, if one disk fails, you're going to lose data. So, um, you know, it's not what I really had in mind. And you know what? Speaking of um, really old hardware that I actually planned to use for the scrap server, it, I wasn't planning on using this motherboard specifically. Um, I, I actually had this old thing. Yes, I kid you not. That is a slot one Pentium three. Uh, based motherboard and, and I had this in in mind originally for um, this particular server and yes considering the, the incredibly aged uh, hardware that that is I only really had plans for this whole machine in general actually to be a 10100 based system not even gigabit I was going to step it down and use uh, that and all that and uh, yes those are ISA slots some people might have forgotten what an ISA slot looks like there are two of them down there so uh, there you go um, and uh, I mean this motherboard is literally not equipped to really do a whole lot it's got like a 550 megahertz Pentium 3 and I think 640 megabytes of PC 133 SD RAM sitting on in there uh, and while it does work the actual board does work so despite its age and also despite um, not that you really could see it there are some bloated capacitors uh, just due to age I would presume you could sort of see Let's see. You see the, the th you see that like four uh, capacitors like in in the middle there. There you can see the third one down actually is slightly bulged. But uh, anyway, as much as I was planning of using that uh, board for that server, 
I think the um, even like dialing back to version 2.1, I believe, of Open Media Vault, I think the CPU is just missing some instruction sets or something else isn't working quite right. Uh, and as much as I can technically get the thing to boot uh, from a from a CD, and I have tried many CDs, so it's not the optical media in this case. Um, I tell it to install when I get a black screen and the machine doesn't do anything, so I'm pretty sure it, there's something else going wrong here, something that I can't really fix. Now, back to the system at hand here. Uh, since I couldn't actually use um, that Pentium 3 system, um, this is actually a super micro-based uh, motherboard uh, running on the, well, running on actually a Core 2 Duo, and this, now, this, this CPU is interesting, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but originally this motherboard came to me uh, it was a bundle actually, it's 8 gigs of DDR2 and I thought that was ECC but it's not and no I do not need 8 gigs of RAM in the system like this Open Media Vault can literally happily run on about a gig of RAM I could probably even have shoehorned it fairly well on 640 megabytes um, like with that, that, that motherboard over there which I just uh, mentioned um, but anyway but I've just got the 8 gigs of RAM in here because I don't really have any other use for it um, and the CPU, because originally this motherboard came to me with a Q6600, you know, a very well-respected, if not a very legendary CPU, as we mostly know. If you've been working with computers for as long as I have, then you will be well familiarized with the Q6600. Uh, but anyhow, um, I switched it out because I, I thought that, um, Q, that Core 2 cord would be a little bit wasted in a system that would only see a few hours of day of operation. And even then... A Q6600 is actually more than enough horsepower, if not a little too much horsepower for even a server. Um, or at least an open media vault server, that is. Maybe if you start running, like, very large sort of raid levels, like raid 6, or maybe like a raid 60 array, or maybe technically 61 if you want to have two raid 6s and, and then um, have them copied together. But I, I don't know. You know, <clears throat> so I switched it out for a um, uh, Core 2 Duo E4500. Now, normally an E4500 is a is a CPU that's worth so little, you could probably buy a hundred of them for a pound. And, well, do the maths there, so they are literally worth about a couple pennies. Um, so, yeah, but this CPU is interesting, which I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, for those who have actually been staring, it might have been staring at it, yes. That's the same 750 watt power supply that I've had ever since I really made... God, how long have I had that 750 watt power supply? Like... I think I probably had it when I made my first proper uh, custom-built system back on the AMD FX um, days. So, you know, it's been a while. I've had that mother that that uh, power supply for a, the longest time now. Um, gave it a clean recently, as clean as I could. It's still a bit dusty in there, but it works. And you know, with this amount of hard drives, you know, you want a decent amount of power to at least get them all booted up. So that's really why I still have that in there. Not to mention, you know, all these wires have been sort of pre-bent into the corresponding sort of location, so hey, I didn't have to wrestle with the wires too much. Um, but anyway, yes, the CPU. Now, you want to know what's really interesting about it? Is when I plonked it into this into this motherboard, I was like, okay, turned it on, and I knew it would post because this motherboard will support pretty much anything up to the 1333 megahertz front side bus CPUs, which, long and the short, means it will support pretty much anything you could throw at it from the um, 775 uh, socket. So that's probably even some of the higher end Core 2 quads if you were so inclined. Um, but this CPU is interesting though, in the sense that when I put it in and booted it up, I realized that the, the, well, the BIOS detected the CPU correctly and it knew what clock speed it should run at, but yet it was running at nearly a gigahertz faster than stock. And, I mean, it was running at 2.93 at base. And you know what I think has happened um, to this uh, to this, that, uh, CPU there? I think, because the, the, the 4500, right, is a 800 megahertz front side bus CPU, I think this motherboard did not detect the front side bus rating correctly, and such, it must be, it's probably left the front side bus speed at the same as the Q6600, which is 1066, and I know you can do this on certain on certain um, computers and such, but you, there are ways to fudge um, that you block off a couple pins of the CPU, and you can sort of fudge the front side bus to run at basically f uh, f full throttle, which is uh, how I've seen people get the Q6600, for example, to clock itself at 3 gigahertz without an overclocking capable board, which is interesting in itself. And... I think because it's misdetected it, this, this system is running at 1066 front side bus and giving me a higher clock speed out of the box. Now if I was to stand up here, and if you ignore the mess, there is actually overclocking settings 
uh, in the um, in the motherboard's BIOS here. And you can also see, I've been tweaking it a little bit, I have not actually pushed this chip any faster, so I really could not tell you where the limits of this CPU are, and especially, okay, granted, it's it might be a larger stock cooler, but it is still an Intel stock cooler nonetheless, and such that I don't know really how far I can push it without thermal issues. Um, but in this case, I've actually overclocked it by a further 5% with uh, a little bit of extra voltage. I only did that just out of more instinct, because I just didn't think it would support those sort of clock speeds on, on stock voltage for that chip. And as you can see, I'm running at 3.1 gigahertz with actually no issues, and that's been fine. Now, the stranger thing is Open Media Vault itself does not detect um, that clock speed increase. It still sees the CPU at 2.2 gigahertz, which is how it should be. But the fact that I'm seeing the, every part of the BIOS tells me otherwise, not to mention uh, it, the CPU itself produces a fair bit of heat, not concerning amount, but more than I would expect for a lonely, um, you know, E4500, which I literally I would not expect that sort of lowish caliber of chip to pretty much heat up that cooler pretty substantially, and then it makes my power supply inhale a lot of exhaust or hot air and um, actually get pretty hot to the point that I was actually a little bit concerned. Um, although, I, to be fair, I was running that originally, and I think plus 75 millivolts on the overvolt, uh, and I dialed it back to 50 while left the clock speed at 3.1, which, you know what's interesting, if I, um, um, just give me a moment here. I'm just, if I, I can't really do this without. Uh, uh, let's have a look. How how high could this motherboard even technically push it? Uh, it's not going to tell me, is it not? Uh, no, I was just going to see overclock by twenty percent. It's not going to update till I post again. But you know, if it is, it, it was saying two point nine three without the overclock, and I left it at five percent. Um, so anyway, that is pretty much the story of this CPU. It seems to be. It seems to be a, a very good instance of the little CPU that could. You know, there are there's probably plenty of um, CPUs out there that have had similar overclock stories. I've heard of a few like low end, really low end Pentium dual cores at like really low clock speeds. I've seen some some. Oh, what was it? Is it the is it the E twenty three hundred? I could be getting my numbering completely mixed up, but it was a 1.86 gigahertz skew. That someone managed to overclock to nearly three gigahertz or something like that, and that is. That is ridiculous, uh, to be honest. And the fact that I did almost... I, I literally put the chip in, and it freaking self-overclocked, and it's stable, with even with a little bit of a bump to 3.1 here. The fact that it is running as stable as it is, despite the heat increase, I think there is some merit to this. I'm pretty sure that... Um, that CPU in there is indeed running at those um, at those speeds. And oh, for, just before I um, probably sign off here, because I think you get the point with this um, scrap server, here is... Um, that is the uh, the motherboard I happen to have. If um, if for whatever reason you want to own a motherboard a motherboard like this, um, so yeah, it's a super micro skew. You can pause the video for the uh, uh, for the information. Some of the basic specs there. It's pretty simple. It's nothing too uh, not too frilly as far as it goes. I mean, scroll down a little bit. You can pause the video here. I'm sorry for my shaky hand. Um, and yeah, supports all the CPUs that you can care to uh, think of there, which is very nice. Oh, so I might have been right. It might have been E two thousand series. So yeah, yeah, maybe I was thinking of that right CPU, and it is non ECC RAM as I um, recently discovered. And yeah, that's pretty much all the details about that. So so yeah, despite <laughs> despite the server being literally made out of crap components. Um, and scrap hard drives. I got to be honest with you, the performance is more than I expected. I can get gigabit speeds out of this machine with no issues, and CPU performance is actually well within what I expected. I mean, true, it's um, <laughs> despite the low end stature, it does certainly hand the butt um, of my Pentium 4 system there. But I've shown, I've said that before, that Pentium 4 um, 3.6 gigahertz um, um, skew in that backup server that can handle a RAID 5 at 4 gigabit speeds. With about 80% CPU usage, it certainly handles it, which certainly proves that P4s can be used for something. And really, once again, once again, don't th if you really have a very low-end CPU, even like an E4500, try um try the uh, I I would actually Google it. I can't I can't remember any exact articles about this, but Google like the um oh what was it? 
there are ways to overclock those uh, CPUs without overclocking motherboards. You got to like block out um, or like use some like electrical tape to block out a couple of the CPU pins. But anyway, you can give that a go and certainly see if you can like speed up. Like, because some of these like Core Two duos, like the really older ones, like this one, they ju they do run genuinely very slow. I don't think for much other reason other than I think um, Intel needed to fill a bunch of the lower end CPU market in with some slower chips. So that's pretty much why uh, in that respect. And they are more than capable of, well, okay, through, uh, in my case, a bit of luck, overclocking to the, to the nth degree and actually running pretty decently. So, hey, if you've got those CPUs kicking around, give them a try. Don't... I mean, have some fun with it. I mean, seriously, like the, an E4500, you could probably get pick up for about, you know, a few pennies on the pound or whatever on um, on eBay. So I could probably get a bunch of those uh, those CPUs. And if you really want to, just overclock the fuck out of them. Who cares if you blow them up? Just the they're, they're cheapest chips and see what you can do with them. If you happen to get a good chip like I did and a good motherboard, in all fairness, give it, give it something to do. And Open Media Vault, like I've said a hundred times... Open Media Vault is so efficient, it doesn't, you can run it on a virtual potato, <clears throat> Pentium 4, for an example. <laughs> you know, it does not need hardware at all. And I probably could have got 10 100 speeds out of that, um, out of that uh, Pentium 3 system there. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now because I'm rambling on 16 and a half minutes of my drivel about a scrap server. But anyway, let me know what you think of this crazy machine down below. And Well, it's not even that crazy, but anyway, what, just let me know what you think of this random thing down below in the... Uh, in the comments, uh, link to my Discord is in the description as always. Also, let me know what you think of this um, this camera, by the way. I mean, if you want to know what phone I'm, I've been recording this whole thing on, it's the um, Huawei, if I'm pronouncing that right, P20 Pro, most recent purchase of mine. And I even though I don't have a job and I shouldn't be purchasing this sort of shit, I don't care. I wanted a new phone, right? We'll just deal with that. So, uh, <laughs> seems like a good phone anyway. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for now. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.